Hello folks and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to be talking about how to install Kubeflow and have it running locally in a secure way. And by secure, I mean, we're going to set up HTTPS so we can assess our Kubeflow installation in our cluster securely using HTTPS certificate. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, there are two ways in which you can install Kubeflow. The first is the Kubeflow standalone component installation. Now this is the installation where you pick and choose the components of Kubeflow that you want to have installed. This means you don't have to have the entire suite of Kubeflow components, but you can just install the specific things that you need for your setup. Okay. And the second way you can install Kubeflow is the Kubeflow platform installation. Now the Kubeflow platform installation includes the entire suite of components of Kubeflow. It's all bundled together and many cloud providers offer this as standalone package distributions. So uh, providers like Google, for example, or AWS and other cloud providers also package the platform distribution of Kubeflow and customize it to their cloud and then give you a couple of steps or click buttons where you can just click through and have Kubeflow installed on your cloud environment. Okay, but in this video, we're going to be focused on how we can install Kubeflow locally and we're going to be using the Kubeflow platform installation. So we're going to install everything uh, that comes with Kubeflow. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing you need to do is to go ahead and clone the Kubeflow MLOps repository on my GitHub. All you have to do if you don't have that yet is to run the git clone command. Okay, and clone that repository locally. Now, once you have that repository locally, you should have some of the codes or commands that we're going to be using to install Kubeflow uh, in a minute. So for installing Kubeflow locally, we're going to use a couple of tools. We're going to be using K3D. Now, if you haven't used K3D before, K3D is a lightweight installation of Kubernetes that's based on Rancher's uh, K3S Kubernetes distribution. Now, if you haven't worked with K3D before, don't know how to install K3D, don't worry about it. It's a very simple process and there's a video linked in the description for you on how to get started with K3D. Now, in this video, I'm going to assume you have K3D installed already. If you don't know how to work with K3D, you never worked with K3D before, please look at the resource section in this video for how to get started with K3D. The other tool we're going to need is kubectl, which if you have K3D installed locally, then you already have kubectl because kubectl is a requirement to have K3D installed. And then we're going to be using nip.io and then we're going to be using mksat. These are tools we're going to be using to configure HTTPS. Now, these are tools we're going to be using to configure HTTPS for our deployment. Now, what it was MKSAT? MKSAT is a zero config tool to make trusted local development certificates. And that's all it is. It helps you generate local SSL certificates and keys for your local environment. So you can work with uh, applications locally using HTTPS, just the same way you will do if they were running on a remote uh, environment or a cloud provider. Okay, and the other tool we're going to be using nib.io. So nib.io is a dead, simple wildcard DM. That's all it is. It helps you map any DNS address to any IP address of your choice. Now, once you have the repository cloned locally, you want to go into the M4 Kubeflow setup directory, resources, Kubernetes, and in there you see a file called K3D Kubeflow Cluster. Now, this is the configuration file we're going to be using for our K3D cluster setup. And let me just quickly run through this. So this is a simple K3D configuration file. Saying we want to create a K3D cluster called Kubeflow cluster, it's one server or master node. I want to create three worker nodes or agents. Okay. And what's important here is this part where we're doing some port mappings. Okay. We're saying we want to map port 8080 on our local host to port 80 on the agent of the K3D cluster or whichever nodes that have the load balancer uh, filters attached to them. Okay. And I'll tell you why this is important in a moment. We're also mapping port 8443 on our local host to port 443 on the load balancer agent on our K3D cluster. Okay. Now by default, when you install K3D, it installs a traffic ingress controller for you. Now, why is this important? On a Mac, Docker doesn't run natively on the host. As a result of that, you can't hit those ingress endpoints directly. So we need to map our local host to the port of the load balancer that the traffic ingress controller is going to expose for us. 
Okay, so that's why this part map is important. Now that we've gone through what this file looks like and why it's important, let's go ahead and create our cluster. Now the first thing you want to do is to run the K3D cluster create. Well, first of all, let's confirm we don't have any K3D cluster running. Uh, in this case, I don't have any K3D cluster. You can see I have a fresh environment here. Now let's create our cluster. K3D cluster create. We're going to set the config of the K3D Qflow cluster. So we're telling K3D, we want to create our cluster using the configuration file that we just specified. Now make sure you're running this from the Kubernetes directory, okay? Now once I hit the enter key, what's going to happen is K3D is going to go ahead and start provisioning that cluster, okay? As you can see, it's creating uh, the server node, and then it's going to create three new agent nodes or worker nodes, which our workload is going to be running on. All right, so our cluster is ready, and we can confirm that by using our kubectl cluster info, which is shows some information about core DNS metric server and our control plane. Now, by default, when you create a new K3D cluster, it updates your kubeconfig to point to that cluster. Okay, and we can also check our nodes by running K3D node list that should show us all the nodes we have on our cluster. So now that we have our cluster running, the next thing we want to do is confirm that our traffic ingress controller has been installed in the cluster. So for that, I'm going to use kubectl get service uh, running on our kube system uh, namespace. We can see our traffic ingress controller load balancer endpoints. So everything looks nice and good. Now with our cluster ready, the next thing we want to do is to clone the kubeflow manifest directory. So go ahead and clone the kubeflow manifest directory. You can copy the URL here, okay? And go back to your terminal and run git clone that directory. Now I already have this cloned locally. If you don't, go ahead and clone that directory. So once you have that repository cloned locally, you wanna go ahead and switch into the repository using CD manifest, okay? And you should be able to see a couple of files here. Now, the only files in here that you wouldn't see in your installation or your download is these two files. And I explain that in a moment is because I already downloaded mine and did a couple of setups. Okay, so, but you should be able to see all the other files in here. Now, the next thing you wanna do is to install Kubeflow. To install Kubeflow, we're gonna be using the command while customize build example. Okay, we're customizing the example directory and piping that into kubectl apply and then running all of that in the while loop, okay? And why is this important? Because some of the components or the way Kubernetes work, some of the CRDs won't be ready on time. And as a result of that, certain resources won't apply exactly or immediately on the cluster. So you need to wait for those CRDs to become available. Something like Knative, for example, which Kubeflow uses a lot. So once the CRDs are ready in the cluster, then those resources will be able to be created. So now I'm going to run that command. You should see a whole bunch of processes kick off here. And what's happening right now is kubeflow is getting installed. You can see a couple of retries, and that's why we need to run this in the loop, because certain controllers need to be ready in our cluster for certain resources to be available. Now we have a whole bunch of CRDs getting created, RBAC roles getting created, role bindings on our deployment, so our Istio is getting set up, authorization policies for Istio, web hooks are getting configured, and here again we have another loop. And why is that important? Like I said, certain resources take a while to become ready in the cluster. As a result of that, we need to run it in a loop. So the API server consistently checks that those resources are available. And once they are available, those resources will be provisioned. Now, ignore all of these warnings. This are happening because of the use of deprecated customized variables in the Kubeflow manifest installation. So it looks like Kubeflow has been installed. Let's confirm that all the resources have been created. Uh, so first, we're going to use the kubectl get parts A and just show all the parts that's running. We can see here we have a whole bunch of pods running. Everything is running or completed states, which is nice and good. And we can check the namespaces as well. Uh, we can see we have a whole bunch of new namespaces here. Kubeflow namespaces, we have the Istio system namespace, SAT manager, and a whole bunch of other stuff installed by Kubeflow. Okay. Now we're going to confirm as well that the service in the Istio system namespace is running. So we want to confirm that the Istio ingress gateway service is running because that is our interface into Kubeflow. That is what exposes us 
or gives us access to the Kubeflow dashboard. Okay, so now that we can see that everything here is running nice and clean, we can go ahead and access our Kubeflow cluster. And how do we do that? One way to do that, or the most direct way, is to just port forward the Istio Ingress Gateway service. Okay, so let's do that first of all. So for that, we're going to run a kubectl port forward service Istio Ingress Gateway and MC Istio system. Forwarding port 8080 on our local host to port 80 in that namespace for the Istio Ingress Gateway service. Okay, so when I hit enter, that port should be forwarded. So now if we go ahead to a browser and we hit localhost port 8080, uh, we should see Kubeflow, okay? So you can see we have Kubeflow installed already. But now Kubeflow is running unauthenticated without HTTPS, okay? And we don't want to keep running Kubeflow port forward every single time we start Kubeflow, okay? Because that will become a pain. This is running on the terminal in the foreground. So once I hit Control C or Command C or whatever, and I go to the browser, you can see Kubeflow not found. So I have to keep running that command every time I want to work with Kubeflow, which is not very uh, convenient for me. So as a result of that, we're going to set up Ingress so we can always have access to our Kubeflow installation. And then we can also set up HTTPS. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So to set up HTTPS locally for Kubeflow, we're going to be using MKSAT and NIP.io. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to install MKSAT which we should be using to generate certificates and keys locally for installation. So run brew install mkset. Now that should go ahead and install mkset utility. If you already have that installed locally, so I don't have to run that command anymore. But if you don't have it, go ahead and install mkset. And then once that's done, you want to run mkset install, which should install additional components required for your operating system. Okay, so once you have MKSAT installed locally, the next thing you want to do is to generate a certificate that we're going to be using for Kubeflow. And in this case, I want to use kubeflow.127.0.0.1 that need the IO. So that's the DNS I want to use. So I want uh, nib.io to route that URL to my local host on 127.0.0.1. So the first thing I want to do now is to generate certificates and keys for my local DNS that I want to use for Kubeflow. And in my case, I've decided that I want to use the kubeflow.127.0.0.1.nib.io as my DNS for accessing Kubeflow. So you want to run mkset kubeflow this, this, this to generate certificate. Now, once you run that command, you're going to have two files generated for you. The first is going to be the kubeflow certificate 127 the certificate key, and then you have the actual certificate. Now, I already run this command. That's why I have these two files already generated for me here. And now that I have those two files generated, the next thing I want to do is to create a Kubernetes secret, Kubernetes TLS secret, okay? That contains my certificate and my certificate key. Okay, so let's do that. So to do that, we want to run kubectl create secret TLS, kubeflow TLS, and we we'll pass in the key which we just generated and the certificate which we just generated here as well. And I'm creating all of that in the Istio system namespace, okay? So once I hit enter, that should create the secret for me. I can confirm by running kubectl get secret namespace Istio system, and I can see I have my kubeflow TLS secret. I can run a describe as well to see that the secret and the key all exist. Okay, so with that done, the next thing I want to do is to create my ingress resource that will take advantage of those the secret I just generated to give me HTTPS. Okay, so for that, we're going to be using the ingress resource you see here in the K3D ingress directory in our repository. Okay, so once I go to the ingress, the YAML file here, you can see here we just create ingress resource. Okay. Now, by default, remember our ingress controller in our K3D cluster is traffic. So I'm setting the traffic annotation for SSL redirect to true. I'm creating this ingress resource in the Istio system namespace. And I'm setting some rules here for my kubeflow host that we just created. So our nib.io kubeflow host, I'm saying route our request on that path to the backend service, which is the Istio ingress gateway service on port 80. Okay, and this is where we're taking advantage of the TLS secret we just generated. So I'm saying for that host, use this secret. This file contains my TLS secret key and certificate. Okay, so now I want to apply this file in my cluster. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you want to make sure you run this from the directory where those files exist. And in my case, I have those in the K3D ingress directory. Okay, 
So now I want to run the ingress the YAML file. So for that, we're just going to do Q, Ctrl, apply F, ingress the YAML. And I can confirm that the ingress has been created for me in the Istio system namespace. Okay, I can see my ingress here is created and it's been mapped to this endpoint here, which is my traffic uh, load balance endpoint. So everything looks nice and good so far. So if I go to my browser, HTTPS on that domain name, I should be able to access my kubeflow. So let's do that. So if you go over to your browser and we hit HTTPS kubeflow 127.0.0.1 and nip.io port 8443. Now this is where the port mapping we did earlier comes into play. Remember, we were mapping port 8443 on our machine to port 443 in our K3D cluster. So if you hit the URL, you should see K3D running directly on your computer. Okay, if you need to log in, make sure to log in. And once you hit that, you should hit the login screen. The username is user at example.com, which is the default username and the password is 12341234. Okay, so once you hit that, you should be able to see the Kubeflow uh, dashboard. So congratulations, if you made it to this point, you have just learned how to install Kubeflow locally and run Kubeflow with HTTPS. So congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back. You've just achieved something phenomenal. Now talking about resource specification, or resource requirements for running Kubeflow. Kubeflow does have some recommendations in terms of how much resource you will need to run Kubeflow. It recommends that two gigabytes of RAM and 16 CPU cores, kind. We don't need kind since we just installed Kubeflow using K3D and you need Docker as well. Now these are recommendations, but if you don't meet these recommendations, do not be discouraged. I recommend you still run Kubeflow and see at what point you run out of resources or Kubeflow starts slowing down. Now, since I have Kubeflow running and I'm, let's assume I'm done with all my machine learning operations locally. And now what I want to do is to clean up my cluster and avoid the resource utilization. It's very simple with K3D. All I need to do is run K3D cluster list and I see my cluster running, I'm just gonna run K3D cluster delete, which deletes that cluster. And now I have a clean environment again. So that's how you can easily create and delete or clean up your K3D clusters. Thanks for watching. That's it for this video. If you wanna keep seeing videos like this, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, bye for now.